A little bit of news here. I'm seeing this from Aaron Wilson. Maybe others have reported it. Um, Washington has hired Texans director of team development, Dylan Thompson. Um, I don't know specifically. Malcolm Blacken served as director of player development for a long time in Washington over multiple administrations. Malcolm's an all-time great guy, and I, I don't think, uh, B, you correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think you can find a soul that would say a bad thing about Malcolm. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes just situations call for change and yeah. clearly, you know, Washington was overhauling everything. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know much about this young man, Dylan Thompson from Houston, but I, I can read this to you. This is a CJ Stroud quote about Dylan Thompson. I know he's going to be mad at me for this, Dylan Thompson. Oh my gosh. Dylan is one of the best human beings that I've ever met in my life. There's a lot, there's a ton of people, great people in this organization, but DT has been the main person. You talk about a brother like to somebody who loves you, no matter what happens on that field, mm -hmm. you can feel that. I just appreciate that. And now he's going to be mad at me, but man, he's a great person. And really one of the reasons why I feel like we were very successful this year. Well, I think th those guys that play, that, that work in that role, like uh, Malcolm did and like Dylan is doing, they may be as influential to the team as anybody out there. Because let's be real, coaches are concerned about you providing or playing well at your sport, your craft. Those guys are trying to make you grow off the field. And, and they want to make sure you understand the things you need to be doing to make sure you're a better person in the eyes of the public. And I think they have a greater influence on guys than people would, would ordinarily say. Malcolm probably was the guy getting phone calls from those guys after hours, <laughs> early in the morning. He made sure guys were at places they needed to be. And I think Dylan would come in and do the same thing. But those dudes are vitally important. Totally. And, I mean, listen, I, I've been trying to temper the, well, C.J. Stroud did it. Well, C.J. Stroud did it. Um, but if you're going to hire the guy that C.J. Stroud loves, Hey, that doesn't sound like a bad recipe. <laughs> Nylon. Um, Nylon. All right. Speaking of recipes, Commander's Wire has done a heck of a job. I mean, they're they've become kind of a content powerhouse. And I'll be honest, in with the NBC Sports Washington website no longer existing and how much content that like I used to produce, Pete used to produce, like we used to crank stuff out. There's a bit of a void out there. And maybe these, these commanders wire folks are, are really stepping in. Mm -hmm. um, Hogs Haven does a lot too. Um, but I think we all know linebacker has been a problem for Washington for some seasons now. I mean, I, I feel like <laughs> and maybe I'm forgetting somebody, Landini, correct me if I'm, if I am. I feel like Washington hasn't had, and I, I don't want to say this because he played at such a high level. London's a, arguably a Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. London Fletcher. But he also was just a true middle linebacker that could hold down the middle of the field. Yeah, I think the last, like, good, memorable linebackers I can think of that were true linebackers in that role were, like, when Will Compton and Mason Foster were playing in the middle. Yep. They they were at least like good, yeah. not great yeah. at times, not good, but like steady, good tacklers, knew where to be. Yeah, I, am I forgetting somebody? I I don't. I'm not trying to be flippant here, but it the linebacker position's been a problem for a number. Washington of years. was outside though, wasn't he, Marcus? Yeah, but I think that was well before yeah, that. That was a long time ago. I think Marcus Washington was like in the Shanahan era. Yeah. But maybe even like the Gibbs Zorn era. A good one that you remember. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Uh, but, you know, I, I think London, London retired after 2013, I believe. Um, I don't think there's really, I'm going to try to see if I can like pull up leading tacklers over the last. Um, But regardless. This new staff came in and immediately, at least to, to my knowledge, tried to address the linebacker position. Yeah. You signed Frankie Louvu, signed Bobby Wagner, draft the kid Jordan McGee out of Temple. Maybe you get more out of Jamin Davis. Um, 
Mike Clay is an analyst for ESPN, a numbers guy. He rated linebackers. Yeah, I saw that. The position group across the NFL. Mm All right, so you've seen it. You told me. Landfill's obviously seen it because he sent it to us. Jeff, have you looked at this yet? No. Do you know where Mike Clay ranked Washington's linebackers? Out of 32 teams, bro. Was this what we talked about earlier? Yeah. We talking about, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I seen that one. I seen that one. They they ranked us like one, right? <laughs> and I thought it was like 20-something. <laughs> one. Mike Clay's projections re- rank Washington first overall. I would, just on the surface, have a pretty tough time with Greenlaw and Warner not going one. I, I like what he's done, but I I was thinking exactly what you're saying. I can't put us before a team that has played together consistently and had the production that San Francisco had. We can't – these guys haven't played together yet. How do you automatically put them ahead of San Fran? <laughs> I don't know. Man. I mean, I like the love that we're getting, but – we have to be. We have to have some reality in this thing. Right now, Warren and Greenlaw, they are the best, hands down. Totally, man. <laughs> I, I, and I guess you bumped the Ravens down because I think Patrick Queen left in free agency and they re-signed Roquan. Um, I think there's a lot to be excited about. I think Luvu and Wagner, it, but they've got to they've got to figure some stuff out as far as coverage goes. There was a time where Bobby Wagner could it was a true three-down linebacker, could do anything. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure that time is now. Um, I, I don't know. Luvu's a super versatile piece. But, like, I, I do think unless you need somebody with the size, like, I, I think at this point, what do we know about Jamin? He's athletic, um, fast. That's kind of the end of the good list, right? Like he 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 has made some serious flash plays, but it's generally inconsistent. If there'll, there'll be a flash play and then there'll be a, a splash play, for lack of a word, better word, um, like I, I look at this roster would be, and I just think if somebody's going to cover some of these great tight ends in the league, and I mean in the division, it's got to be one of their safeties. You think I'm? Is that possibly? I mean, I listen. I'm I'm still expecting even Jamin Davis to be a better player. I think that he can be a guy still to cover cuz he can run with these guys. They they just got to find give him a little bit more confidence. I I think last year they basically well his whole time here so far they he wasn't he wasn't confident in nothing he had to do cuz every time he did something they changed it up. You know? So it just it it, it doesn't and covering is not like being on the guy so tight all the time. You just got to be close enough to the quarterback goes away from him. And I think he has that capability. Yeah, I think I think you believe in Jamin to turn things around a little bit more than I do because I just look at the action so far. If the if the folks taken over, Peters, Quinn, mm-hmm. Ken Norton, they, they've watched all the film. Like they 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 yeah. they, they can recognize perhaps certainly better than I can what they think the player is and what the flaws were and how he was deployed previously. Right. And so they've watched all the film. They've done everything. They proceeded to sign three free agent linebackers and draft one. Like that tells me a fair amount. Yeah. But, they, they, but that they, doesn't mean they he can't brought perform. In a middle linebacker, which he never was. And I don't know why they tried to play him at that. So they brought in the middle linebacker to solidify this thing. And they brought another guy who's more of a pass rusher. Than just a drop back type of guy in Louvu. Louvu, sure. Jamin is still a guy on his team who can cover. And I think that they can get better play out of him than what we've seen prior. I think that's the hope there. Yeah. Right? Like, if they can, if they can, then maybe this group really is. I just, that just seems kind of bananas to me to say that. 
the commanders. I mean, you think about the great defenses, the Browns, the Jaguars, the Jets. I hate giving the Steelers any credit, but look at their linebacker. Yeah. But I'm not saying they're the best because Tony is going to text me every day the best. No, they're not. They're good though. If you had the, if you had they Washington, got White House, yeah. Smith, Queen, and Holcomb. Well, I don't know, look. I, I'm gonna just stop at at Queen. <laughs> Holcomb's another dude that played better once he got out of this scheme and everything. Yeah, but and, and maybe it helps when you've got T.J. Watt. But yeah, I watch him run too much out of stuff. He he was so fast, he just ran himself into trouble. Um, to me, it's a little silly. I, I want to properly respect a guy like Bobby Wagner, who is a future Hall of Famer. But, like, to say the commanders now have the best linebacker core in the NFL over some of these more established groups just seems a little silly. 